Hey guys, what's up? Mike Locke here. Thanks for tuning into this video. I want to talk about creating a portfolio piece using photos that you may already have. Now, uh, why is this why is this important? Well, portfolio is one of the biggest things or most important things that any web designer can have, and we always have time, downtime, um, to actually work on concept work to add to our portfolio. So, and this also applies to folks who are just starting out. Uh, you're not doing any work at the moment. You can always take your camera, look through photos that you already have, or go out and shoot some, some, some objects, and getting get inspired by those objects to create fictitious or fake websites that you can apply to your portfolio. An example is here's a photo that I recently took at a Big Bear trip, and it's a picture of some snow boots uh, that I took from a from a friend of mine. And um, while I was browsing through these photos recently, the last couple of days, I saw these shoes and I thought, you know what, this actually looks like, like a model shot that you would see on a retail website of a shoe store, like Zappos or something like that, right? So with this shoe being inspired by this shoe, I was able to create this particular mock-up. And what I'm gonna do is just show you how I did that and this would probably spark some ideas and allow you to look through your photos or get your camera out and go out and start taking photos of objects and being able to create um, concept work for your own portfolio. All right, so take a look at this. I'm gonna walk through how I built this website uh, using this photo that I took. All right, hopefully you enjoy this. All right. Okay, so here we are on my desktop and I just wanna walk you through some of the photos that um, I took recently at my Big Bear trip and here here is the actual photo that I'm going to be using in the mock-up. Let me show you the mock-up, the completed site. So the site looks something like this where you have the nice big hero shot billboard. You have your navigation bar up top and down below I grab these, shoot, these, these items from Google. You can randomly like grab some images off there and uh, a little footer okay so it looks like a professional retail internet website that sells snow boots and I created this little logo so I'm gonna walk you through how I created that when I start over here in Firework, fireworks my canvas is 1400 pixels wide and I'm just using a black canvas here uh, and uh, 1500 pixels in height so the first thing I do is I'm going to turn on the guides. Now to create these guides, I normally create these guides so that I know where I want to position things and, and lay things out. So normally what I'll do is I'll have I'll, I'll have my, my two guides here that's over here on the left and over here on the right. I, this space in between is 960. So I know I want to build my website within 960 and to just if you don't know how to build or get to lay these guides out with your rulers turned on you just go to view rulers just click on rulers and over here on the left just click on the ruler click on the ruler and drag to your canvas and that should actually bring out guides for you alright so that's how I lay those or, or uh, bring out these guides or create these guidelines all right, so I know it's 960, and I'll say this is by 100. So the top portion is where I would create my navigation and my logo, and then down here, I this space is about 300 pixels in height. This is my billboard, and then this bottom line here is I always place this guide here at about 600 pixels. So this deter this basically lets me know that anything below this 600 pixel mark would um, potentially show up below the fold. The fold is like uh, if you have a, a small monitor and it looks something like this, I know that um, anything below the fold is uh, when you have to scroll. Alright, so that's why I put that 600 pixel mark. So the first thing I do, um, let me just turn off the guides. If you do command semicolon, you can turn off the guides easily on a Mac. So here is the photo and all I did was just drag the photo in here and I positioned it within the 960 960 space alright so that's the first thing I did and then the the 
the second thing I did was uh, I created um, a navigation bar and so if you can see closely I've added elements already so this is basically just a black bar that's about 54 pixels in height and I just laid that out across across from left to right and looking over here all I did was just drag I just created some text right I created some a fake navigation menu now zooming in also having with this bar here I have I, I created uh, some some texture on that um, and I just you can just do that by creating that going to filters noise adding noise and um, um, that should give you these little pixel marks and little some texture on the background but looking at you see these two these two marks here what I'm what I wanted to what I created was just uh, my divider between my navigation bar and you can do that easily by going over here and getting your box your square tool creating a black bar you can just do copy paste and then create make your other bar white and then you want to play with the opacity so that um, you lower it a little bit and it looks something like this where you have a black bar on the left and a lighter bar on the right and then when you zoom out you get this effect that it's sort of indented get it alright so that's how I created these little dividers in between there and then I created over here I created a little fake uh, search box here's my search box my uh, search shoes text and this is my um, little go button so that's my navigation bar to start okay then I created a logo looking up here you can see I created a little mountain thing and Michael Anthony is actually my middle name so I'm using my my official name for this fake website and if you look at this closely it looks like an M and A and actually I got lucky uh, by 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 pulling out that logo but so for that logo I wanted I know I wanted to do something with a mountain because it 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 works with this particular website theme and so what I went I did was I just did a Google search for mountain logo and I saw these mountain lo mountain sort of logos and I just quickly created um, this logo in uh, fireworks using uh, I just use the pen tool the vector pen tool and you can do something like this you can do click 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 just keep clicking with your pen tool without dragging and you can uh, you can create stuff like that cool vector objects turn the anti-alias on and it looks something like that alright so that's how I created this logo here so that was pretty simple the other thing was I needed some copy this is my billboard and I needed some copy so I just created this copy think winter and um, I, I found this label for these boots and I just created a little call to action button so remember on your billboard you have your hero shot you have some copy and you have a call to action so clicking this would actually take um, this person to the details for this particular shoe the other thing I wanted to do was add a background so let's get rid of these elements I just want to show you um, I took another screenshot I took another screenshot and um, or not on a screenshot but an image from from one of the photos of my Big Bear trip and I created this this uh, as a background image and what I did was I faded that image out um, to black and you can do that by let's see ungrouping see here's the image and all I did was do uh, let's do command creative auto vector mask and so I just chose that 
and I just created this little vector mask there. All right, so that's how simple that is. Let me just add these elements back. So when I have that, what I needed below this, below the uh, the billboard shot, I needed some content. So I just created these uh, these three boxes here of content. And looking at this particular box here, they're all the same, just for this particular layout. What I did was I went to uh, go over to Google. You can just do like um, snow boots an image search and you can grab you know boots off of here which I did like this I grabbed that and I just copied it and pasted it into my mock-up as an example you know so it's just a just a, uh, using it for concept work it should be fine and uh, also for my background I added this wood this wood uh, texture to give it a little bit more uh, depth or some some more graphic appeal um, to my to my um, to my mock, and I just had this this particular wood background. I actually had this for a while. I I, I got this off of iStock Photo, so you can go to iStock Photo and grab background background images. Um, the last thing was I added a footer with some fake links here, and a little highlight of the logo, and a little copyright text at the bottom. All right, so that's pretty much it, and I uh, just wanted to show you the the final website one more time. So here's the website, and looking at the website, I it it took me about a couple hours to actually go through this, go through this website, um, and what I did was uh, I went, I searched on the internet for for a different type of uh, e-commerce websites and it kind of gave me an idea of how I might want to lay this website out so um, basically what I would advise you to do is look through your photos or go and take photos of objects around your house and see what type of fake websites that you can probably build for yourself for your own portfolio piece and uh, do some research do you know do use some of the principles that I lay out on my my YouTube channel on how to actually build a website and um, using your own professional photos um, create maybe some uh, some concept work like this and add it to your portfolio alright so hopefully this was helpful and you learned a little bit from this um, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't and uh, follow me on my blog alright we'll talk soon thanks for watching bye